I've got an interesting tutorial for you today. Today we're gonna make a stained glass window texture while also talking about masks and how we can divide our material into multiple components that we can use those masks to combine everything together. <laughs> It's easy to get lost in a complex graph. So by thinking about our material as a bunch of simpler components, we can use masks to combine everything in the way that we intend to. First off, I'm gonna show you the basic principle on how to create a simple procedural stained glass material. After that, I'm gonna show you a more developed version of this material and how we can take the concepts that we've learned so far and from other videos that I've made and really enhance and increase the level of detail in our material. Let's get started. All right, so let's get started. We'll create a new substance. We're gonna use the PBR metallic roughness template and I'm gonna call this stained glass utility. I'll keep it at 2K, absolute, 16 bits per channel, and hit OK. And you see I get a little pop-up here of my Explorer. I like to have that on my second screen here so I can free up some space for the tutorial. Let's just organize our scene a little bit. So what I'm going to do is go to my materials and change this to tessellation. It's going to bring up my properties here, and I'm just going to set it to something like uh, 16 for the tessellation factor. Actually, I'm not even going to touch the scale at all yet, and you'll see why later because this is uh, not a very uh, tall material. Okay, so up next, I'm going to create a blend, and I'm going to attach this to the normal, and I'm going to make a new ambient occlusion node, and attach this to our output, and then attach this blend to that. And also I'm going to attach this blend to the height and delete that uniform color here. It's yelling at me because it doesn't know if it's a color node or a grayscale node. Uh, it'll fix it as soon as we put something in there. We're gonna be working from back to front here. And what I mean is the furthest away or lowest to the ground part of our height map is what we're gonna build first. And then we're gonna build up upon it as we go higher and higher in our height. So to start off, we're gonna create some supporting glass panes that are gonna hold up and frame our stained glass pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a clouds two node. This is a great, this is a great noise, uh, but it's got all of these sort of light and dark peaks and valleys here. And I wanna get rid of that and just get the texture. So to do that, I'm going to add a high pass grayscale node. So you'll see what this does. If I connect it here, it's getting rid of those really that puffiness and it's just keeping the texture that I really like from this. And I'm gonna, you can adjust it even further. You can change the radius, how much you're gonna keep. Let's see, I'm gonna keep it a bit low here. That looks fine. And also I think I wanna adjust the scaling of my clouds. So I'm going to, let's drag it all the way up to eight. That's good. And I'm gonna adjust the radius even more. Excellent. So if I pump this into our blend, you see our errors go away. And we're getting quite an interesting material here so far. I'm going to adjust my height depth on the ambient occlusion. So we're creating sort of a, uh, a frosted glass kind of like texture right now to start off with. So I'm going to make some room here. I'm going to drag all this over and I want to make some panels. And to do that, I'm gonna start with a tile sampler. And I didn't wanna add it to the end, I'm just gonna add it separately. So I'm gonna borrow this connection and hold shift and bring that back into our high pass grayscale. So we got our tile sampler, and I'm gonna adjust the X and Y amount. So I don't want very many of these. I'm gonna set this to something like two for the X and three for the Y and let's scroll down here and adjust our scale. So, so that's looking good. All right. Now, right now, if you put this in the height map, the white parts are what are, are what gonna stick out and the dark parts are gonna sink in and we wanna have the opposite of that. So I'm gonna select my tile sampler node, hit spacebar and add an invert grayscale. And so now we have the opposite effect here. And this is creating our frame, basically. We have a frame around the outside and then our beams, as it were, in the middle. 
And if I look at this now, it's very clean and we want to distort them a little bit. So what I want to use is a slope blur grayscale. I'm going to put that into the grayscale input. And then as my slope intensity here for this input, I'm going to get uh, crystal one noise. This is a great noise. And I'm going to adjust the scale a little bit here. I'm going to bring this into our slope blur and double click to see what it's doing. And it's crazy right now, but let's crank up the samples and let's bring down the intensity here quite a bit. Actually, we really don't need that much. Maybe something like 0.2 might just be enough. Sorry, 0.02. It's a very small amount. And let's see what this is doing here. So let's, uh, let's create a blend. And we'll take the connection here that's going to our outputs and just bring it into this blend. And then we have a background here and a foreground for our beams. And I'm just going to add it. So you can sort of see what's going on here. We've got our beams. They've got a tiny bit of distortion on them for now. I think that's all we're really going to need. Let's, uh, let's increase our 3D view so you can see what's going on here. And I'm going to, now that I'm getting some height, I'm going to go to my materials, into the roughness, into the tessellation shader, and I'm just going to add the tiniest bit of scale here. Because if you bring too much out, it gets really crazy really fast. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit. That way we're getting some height here in our 3D viewport. Okay, that's looking like our base. Okay, so I really want to keep organized here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down into components so it's really easy to piece everything together. And I'm actually going to take a few steps back here. So we've got our tile sampler here with our beams and we've got our supporting glass here. I'm going to get rid of this blend. And I'm going to select these this whole beam section here, hit spacebar and add a frame. I'm just going to call this beams. And then I'm going to select the clouds and the high pass grayscale. I'm going to call this supporting glass texture. So we see what our graph looks like now. And I'm even going to uh, disconnect this because I want to start building these things on later on. So what's cool about this process is that you'll be able to input any shape or image into this utility that we're going to make. And the result of it is going to be something that represents a stained glass window. So we're going to create our own shape today, but you can make your own or import a bitmap. It's up to you. So we're going to create a flower like shape today. So let's get started. So I'm going to move these things down a little bit. Uh, we're going to use them a little bit later. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is create a new shape node. Got our shape here, and I'm going to choose a paraboloid. I'm going to keep it at one for the scale and the size. It's looking great. And I'm going to use a really cool node called the Shape Mapper node. This is a really neat node. So the Shape Mapper node takes your input and distributes it in either a circular or a polygonal shape. Really useful when creating flowers or moss. And we might get into that in a later tutorial. So right now I've got our shape mapper. I'm going to plug it into our input here and you can see what it does. It's automatically set to circle and we have a circle distribution of our paraboloid shape. And we've got a bunch of really cool parameters here. We've got our pattern amount so we can change how many there are. We're going to choose eight. We've got a radius here. I think, yep, I'm going to keep it down to zero. So we're getting sort of that flower like shape now. And we've got a width here. Let's adjust that a little bit. And of course, you can change the rotation if you'd like. It's up to you. I'm actually just going to keep it at default for now. So we've got the basics of our shape here. Now, next, we're going to use another really cool node, and that is the quantize grayscale. So if I type in quantize there, the quantize grayscale node is similar to the posterize filter in Photoshop. It takes your grayscale input and it divides it evenly by creating this stepping effect. So you can adjust the levels of detail with only one parameter here, and that is the quantize parameter. So if we bring this up, if I double click here, you see what it's doing. It's adding some resolution and increasing the amount of steps between light and dark here in our grayscale values. So I'm thinking I'm only going to want 
about four steps here because I want it to be a very simple pattern, but you can increase the complexity and it will also work with our utility node no matter how complex this quantized grayscale node is set to. So I'm doing a little pre-planning here, and after the quantized grayscale, I'm gonna add a levels node, because I don't want these inner circle parts here to be absolute white. I wanna bring it down a little bit, because I know I'm gonna select these shapes as masks later on, and to make that easier, I'm going to bring down our luminance values here just a little bit, because there's gonna be other parts of our shape that are gonna be absolute white, and we'll select those later on. So I just added a levels node, brought down the value here, and you can see what it's done. After this levels, I'm gonna add the edge detect node. And this is such a useful node. I'm gonna bring down the edge roundness here and the edge width. You can see what it's doing. It's creating a really awesome shape right now, actually. Let's dial in some of these values here. I want the edge width to be about here. And for the roundness, you see, if we make it too round, it starts cutting off some of our shapes and that could be our desired effect, but I think I want more of this petal shape. So let's go with something like 0.78 for now. All right, and just like the shapes that we have for our beams, I'm gonna wanna add another slope blur grayscale. And instead of using the same one, I'm gonna create another one here. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select and drag, hit Control C, and control V to paste and get rid of that extra connection here. And now I have an identical slope blur grayscale. And, and I have two separate slope blur grayscales here because I want to adjust these values separately later on. I might want to differentiate the amount of detail that I have on my flower shape than I do from my beams. So I'm going to bring in this edge detect and double click on the slope blur to get the preview working. And right now where we had it before with the 0 0.02 intensity and the crystals at a scale of 18 works just fine for now, but we might want to adjust it later. So we've got that little bit of detail going on and that's looking great. Now, same as before, I want the black outlines to be the parts that are sticking out from our height. So I'm going to have to add another invert grayscale here. So we've got these outlines in white now. And in addition to that, I'm actually going to add another connection coming out of our slope blur grayscale, and I'm going to be adding a flood fill node. So the flood fill node's really handy. It takes all of these shapes that are surrounded by a black outline, all these islands, and detects that they're different shapes themselves. So we can add different utility nodes to this flood fill. For instance, flood fill to grayscale. And now if I double click on my flood fill to grayscale and I adjust the luminance and the random here, you can see that each of our islands here have a different luminance value. So I'm gonna turn the luminance all the way up, the luminance random, all the way up to one. And I'm gonna adjust this luminance adjustment so that we get some really harsh values here. Thinking, yep, negative 0 0.05 looks good for now. And we're gonna use this as an intensity multiplier for later. So we have this coming out of our slope blur grayscale, and we also have our outlines inverted coming out of the same node. Let's make some more room here. And I'm gonna select these nodes, hit spacebar, and create another frame here. So we're keeping organized. I'm gonna call this flower. Great, so we have our flower, our supporting glass texture, and our beams. So we need to create a bunch of masks in order to blend everything correctly. And also so we have a lot of control later on. So I know that I'm gonna need a mask for the entire flower shape. So to do that, I'm gonna extend our frame here a little bit. And to get our entire shape, let's see, we've got our levels node here and it has all of our values. We can use a histogram scan from this node. Type in spacebar and histogram scan. And I go from that levels and I drag it in here, double click, and I move the position up. You see that we're getting those values. And if I increase the position all the way to the right, and just keep the contrast at one for good measure. We have that entire shape here and we have that mask. Histogram scan is a great node for making masks and we're gonna use it a bunch. The next mask we're gonna make a mask for our beams. And you'll notice if we double click our slope blur grayscale that's coming out of our beams here and we zoom in, you see these values aren't exactly black and white. They have some gradients and some grayscale values in there. 
So we need to use our histogram scan node again to create a full black and white mask for our modified beams. So again, I'm gonna extend this a little bit and I'm gonna add a histogram scan, bring up the position and the contrast here. And you can see now we have a mask encompassing all of those grayscale values. We can see our detail here. So I'm gonna start combining these things together a little bit. So again, I'm gonna make some more room here, move our outputs over. I'm gonna add a blend node. So I wanna get the outlines of our flower that have been uh, slope blurred, so they're all distorted and have uh, a little bit more character to them. And I wanna get the levels with all of our grayscale detail, and I wanna combine them together. So I'm gonna use this blend, and I'm gonna take the distorted outlines here and drag them into the foreground, and then grab our levels here with our grayscale data into the background, and I'm gonna set this to add. So now you can see our, our outlines with our distortions and our grayscale values. I also wanna start adding my beams in, but I don't want them to overlap with our flower shape. So I'm gonna create another blend I'm gonna put the histogram scan with that mask we just made of our beams. I'm gonna put that into the background. Then I'm gonna find our flower mask and bring that into the foreground. So now, if I set this blend to subtract, you'll see that our flower shape is now being subtracted from our beams. So you can see all these pieces are starting to come together and we're gonna start adding them together shortly. Let's blend these two together I'm gonna take our beams as the background and our flower as the foreground and set this new blend to add. You can see they all start fitting together now. So these outlines intersect with these outlines, but don't go through the petals. We're starting to get a clear picture here. And to finally start adding things into our 3D view, we're gonna use an amazing node called the height blend node. So height blend, so the height blend takes three inputs here. We've got the height top, the height bottom, and then it outputs a blended height result and a mask. All of these outputs and inputs are extremely useful. So let's take this flower and beams and put it in the height top. And then this is sitting upon our glass that we made earlier. So let's go back and find our supporting glass texture. And to keep things kind of organized, I'm going to rearrange these two. So we've got the beams above the supporting glass texture. And let's take our high pass grayscale that we made from our glass texture and bring it into the height bottom of our height blend. We'll double click that. Let's take our blended height output here. And I'm using the middle mouse button to pan while I have this selected. And let's put this into the foreground of our blend. And now we can see what's going on here, but it doesn't quite look right yet. So let's go back to our height blend and change the height offset here. Now, if I bring this down, you'll see that our flower is sinking in. And if I bring it up, our petals are now starting to lay on top of the glass. Now I'm noticing, I think I have my scale and tessellation up a little too high. So let's go to my materials hit edit. You can do this two different ways. You can go to materials and hit edit if you're already selected on the proper tessellation shader, or you can go to here and choose tessellation. It does the same thing if it's already selected. And I'm going to bring my scale down just a bit. Really don't need that much because it's a very flat surface. And so now you can start to see what's going on here. We've got our intricate flower shape here with these outlines looking like realistic pieces. You can see we have our slope blur grayscale to those outlines really adding some character to it, to both our beams and to our outlines here, our pieces of glass. And if I hold control shift and right click, I can move the light around and we can see what's going on here. Okay, so let's keep ourselves organized a little bit here. So we have our masks and I wanna start commenting some of these because you can comment on a node and that really helps you sort of organize your thoughts. You can see everything right in front of you. So I'm gonna take this node here, and this is our combined height. We're gonna use this node quite a bit because we need to send this out to multiple outputs and, and other nodes later on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click this blend node. Now this blend node is the one that goes into the foreground or height top 
of our height blend. So I'm going to click that blend, right click it, and choose add comment. And I'm just going to change this to combined height. I'm also going to label our beams mask. So I'm going to right click, add a comment, beams mask. So overall things are looking pretty good here. We've got a couple of our pieces. We've got our flower, we've got our beams, and we've got our glass texture underneath everything. The next thing I want to do is add a bit of texture onto our petals because stained glass windows have a very particular sort of painterly style texture. And I want to show you a neat way to quickly whip that up here in Substance Designer. So to do this, let's create a Clouds 2 noise. We're using Clouds 2 quite a bit today. And I'm going to add a neat node to it called the Swirl Grayscale node. And it does exactly what you think it does here. You can see we've got this little transform. We can move it around and we can choose the amount. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scale up this transform uniformly by holding Alt and Shift and bring this up here to the well, to the maximum that it'll go around the frame here. And I'm going to adjust the amount. Don't want it too much. And I'm going to plug in a directional warp to this. And the directional warp takes uh, two inputs. The first input is the default one that takes in our grayscale values here. The next one is our intensity input. Now, remember earlier I said we created this intensity map using our flood fill to grayscale node from our flower. So if I take these and connect them, I take the output of the flood fill grayscale and bring it into the input intensity input of our directional warp, you can start to see what's going on here. If I increase the intensity, in fact, let's increase this intensity quite a bit. Let's say 200. And you can, you can really see what's going on here. Notice that this part of the pedal and this part of the pedal are moving at different rates. And that's because the intensity map that we created here have different grayscale values. The lighter our values are, the more the directional warp is going to take effect. The darker it is, the less it's going to move by this directional warp. So. If I bring up the intensity, you'll see it varies based on the flood fill grayscale node that we created. So let's increase this a bit more to something like that for now. And we can change the warp angle here. So you can see where it's pushing that swirly texture that we've made around. And we, you can choose whichever you'd like to do here. Let's select these nodes and frame them up. And because this is specifically for color information, I'm just going to change the color to something that's different in our graph so we can really see what's going on. And I'm just going to call this swirly albedo texture. And we'll just place this up here for now. So the next mask that we need to create are for both the petals and the beams together. To get all that information, I'm going to use our combined height mask that has everything in it. And I'm going to create another output out of that and grab our handy histogram scan, bring that position all the way up and the contrast all the way up for good measure. And let's, let's move this over to where our albedo texture is. And let's add a blend node. So we'll put our directional warp into our foreground here and we'll put the histogram scan into the opacity mask. You can see now this is only taking effect where this mask takes place. And let's see what this starts to look like in our 3D view here. So I'm going to take the output of our blend that we just made and drag that into our base color. And you can really see now what's starting to happen. You can see that pattern that we made, those brush strokes are really showing off here. But unfortunately, they're showing on top of our outlines as well, and we don't want that. So we need to make yet another mask here. And this is the reason why I decided to bring a levels node in between our quantized grayscale and our edge detect in our petals, because we need to start selecting some of these values with our histogram scan, and some of them are going to be pure white and the petals are not. So we need to get a selection of just our edges and all of these edges include our beams. So to get that mask, let's double click on our combined height. And you'll see our outlines are in complete white, but everything else has a different grayscale value. So that makes it really easy to select just our edges. And that's why we 
darkened our petals with that levels note earlier. So let's create that edges mask. So I'm going to drag yet another output out of our combined height blend, and that's going to be another histogram scan. So we're adjusting the position and you really don't need to go very far because the white value is pure white. And I always like to increase the contrast just to make sure. But if we increase this further, you'll see that we're selecting more pieces. Really, we just want those outlines. So yeah, 0 0.02 should be great to just get the outlines. And we need to use this mask to subtract this swirly albedo from our outlines. So we've got a blend here with everything in it. Let's add another blend off of that. So it automatically puts the output of our albedo blend into the background. Now we need to take our outline mask that we created and put it into the foreground and subtract it. And it's looking pretty good. However, notice that we're, we're getting a couple gaps here. And we really need to refine this edges mask just a little bit more. Now, if you ever have this happen, here's a cool way to fix it. And that's using the distance node. So if I look at my edges mask here, this is the one that comes out of our combined height and we refined it. To extend these lines, we're gonna use that distance node. So I'm gonna select the connection coming out of our histogram scan, hit spacebar and type in distance and it looks a bit crazy now, don't worry too much. We're gonna refine it in a second. With this node, we can extend that mask. Really cool node. So I'm gonna choose a value somewhere around, right around here, not, not very much at all. And to focus this in, I'm gonna use the node that we've been using so much lately, and that is our histogram scan. Histogram scan is so useful. It's like a levels node, but it just gives you two easy sliders here. So if I bring up that position, and the contrast. Check this out. You can refine and you can see what's going on in our 3D view at the same time as our 2D view, which is really cool because we have this all connected up. You see our histogram scan is connected to our distance node, which is connected to the foreground node, it starts singing a song, into our base color. So if I click that histogram scan, keep the contrast at one and just adjust that position, we can add more thickness to this mask. And if we do too much, you can see it's eating into our petals. So let's bring it down a little bit. And you can see what adjusting with the contrast does too. It softens that mask a little bit. So you might need to just play around with your shape. Really get a good mask here. We don't want any edges. That's looking pretty good. I think actually we need to tighten it up just a little bit more. Excellent. Looking good. So we have that really cool painterly look going on with our petals. So let's zoom out a little bit, make sure that we're keeping organized. I'm gonna bring our outputs in that final blend node that I have going into most of those outputs. Bring it over here. So looking at our shape here, when we think about stained glass windows, we know that all of these pieces need to be supported and you can tell that some of these pieces, like this one, doesn't have any connections to any of its neighbors. It's kind of just floating in the middle there, and that doesn't look very stained glass-like. So what we need to do is we need to start adding some supports here. And to do that, we're going to use a cells noise. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. As a final piece to our puzzle here, I'm going to go and create a cells for noise. And cells for is unique because it has an input which allows you to drive this cell-like pattern here by a shape or a grayscale input. So in theory, if I just add a shape and we can add another paraboloid here and I plug this into the input of our cells and, and I double click on the cells, go to the color source and choose image input. Check out what's going on here. It's remapping this shape into this cell pattern and you can change the scale and you can get very specific looking cell shapes going on here. You can change the disorder. With that in mind, I'm gonna get rid of the shape here. I'm gonna take the levels node that we've been using to create some of these masks. I'm gonna branch off another output and drag it into the input of our cells. And remember we have image input enabled as our color source. And we can create a very custom pattern based on 
this one input here. So we imported our shape, brought it into cells, and I'm going to adjust the scale a little bit here. I'm going to attach an edge detect to our cells here. And you might be able to see where this is going. I'm going to change the width. I'm going to make these a bit thinner. And I'm going to change the roundness here just a tiny bit. And looking at our shape here, the only thing that we need to add supports to are these two loops. So if I go to that levels, we only need to add supports to this shape and this shape in our pedals. The outside ones are connected to our main support beams that we have. So let's get a mask of just those two from this level. So of course we're going to drag another output and get another histogram scan. Let's change the position and increase that contrast. So we know we just want those two. Gonna get a blend and our foreground of the blend is gonna be this edge detect. The background is gonna be our new mask here of the two petals and the blend mode is going to be set to subtract. So now you can see that where our petals are, that's where these supports are now being added. So now all we have to do is add these supports into our graph. So the proper place to do that is going to be between the blend here that's going into the foreground of our combined height and that combined height blend. I'm going to add another blend and we're going to set this blend to add. And what we're going to add from our foreground is this new support blend that we have. You can see now We've created a procedural support glass shape here. And what's really cool about this is we can go back, go to our cells for, and we can move this disorder around and we can really dial in and art direct what we want these supports to look like. And you can change the scale. You can add more. You can also go into your edge detect and you can change the width. So you can make these really thick or you can bring them down and the roundness. So what's neat about the roundness is if you look at right here, if we increase the roundness. We get more of like a welded shape going on more realistic in this case. And now it looks a bit more believable, like everything's being held together. And this is all being driven by our initial shape in this cells four, which then goes through the edge detect. So now I just want to do a little bit of graph cleanup and I'm going to create a frame for all of these different masks. I just want to be able to label them a little bit. This one here, the one that comes out of our distance node, these are all of our edges. So I'm going to call this edges mask. This is our full flower and beams mask. This is our flower and grayscale. And this is our supports. I'm going to keep those out of the mask frame for now. This is our height blend. I'm going to keep that out here for now. And to add a dot node here, hold alt click and you can sort of redistribute these connections if you'd like. So let's select these spacebar, add a frame. And I'm actually going to let's go with purple and call this masks. And so we can get a sort of an overview of what's going on. Oh, I also need to create a frame for our supports. So really the way that this particular utility was created is we, is we have all these different pieces here. We've got the supports, the flower, the beams, and the texture in the back. And then we've got our masks and these drive all of the different parameters and we can use these masks to even adjust our roughness, our metallic, and they're all being blended together to create our material. So for now, here's our final graph and there's so much potential here. Uh, one of the things I really wanted to show off is the fact that this is fully procedural and we can really change our main input here and dial in any kind of stained glass shape that we'd like to. So we can change the scale, Things are going to update accordingly. 
we can go into our shape mapper and we can dial down the pattern amount. You can see this is all updating procedurally here. We can add more petals. We can change the radius. No matter what kind of shape you put into this into this quantized grayscale node, it's going to propagate and create your stained glass texture, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, so I thought it'd be really cool if I went ahead and took this material a little bit further. And I can show you how by using some of these masks and by adding more properties to this texture, like an emission channel and a roughness channel, you can really extend and increase the detail to our material. So to start off, I actually recreated and enhanced our frosted glass texture that we did. So what I did here, if you look at the results of what we've got, you can see we've got more of that kind of smudgy, refractive glass. So to do that, I just took the clouds two that we've been using and scaled it, uh, scaled it up or down, I guess, depending on how you look at it. And uh, I added a slope blur grayscale and used our crystal one. And when you do that, if I increase that intensity here, you see we start to get that frosted look. And then if you want to, you can add a blur onto this to sort of give it sort of a less of a sharp feel. I kind of left it here just because you can, but I'm not really using it here in this example. So after that, I wanted to start adding some color to our albedo. So originally we had our swirls, but we didn't really have any color going into it. So what I did was I took a uniform color here and I got a histogram select. So a histogram select node is kind of like a histogram scan node, except you can choose which position in the histogram you can basically select in this case and change the range and the contrast. And you can get any of our uh, any of our grayscale values. So you'll see if we go back to our really useful quantized grayscale into our levels node, we've got these different levels of on our histogram. And with this histogram select node, we can select which range we're looking at. In this case, I'm just looking at just this range of gray. So with that mask that we created, I used that as the opacity for a blend with our uniform color, and we've got our orange here. Now, when I did this though, it got rid of all of those swirls and detail that we added. So I then took our mask that we kind of created here to create our original albedo, which is our flower swirls without edges. I've added a comment here and put that through a gradient map to convert it to color information and then tightened it up with the levels and took into this blend. And now we have that color and our swirls together and that's what's giving us this effect. And it basically did the same thing here with all the other colors. So I selected the next range up here and then added a blue color, blend that in, selected the next range and added a green color. And then finally over here, I have a mask of just our outlines. And that's because if you want to, you can affect the color of just our beams and edges here, which I ended up not doing, but I left this here just in case I wanted to. So really what we could do is we could just take our color here and, and set it as the background of this final blend. And this final blend has a mask of just our supporting panels, no edges and no flower. And that's in the opacity of this blend. And then I have a uniform color here that I can now change to any color. And now our background glass panels can be any color we'd like them to be. And that goes right into our base color output. So now we've got some color going on. After that, I decided to create the roughness values that really sell some of the detail and the reflections of our stained glass material here. So that clouds two comes back I use the levels to refine the information just a little bit to get some really contrasty values here. And then I blend it with a uniform color so I can really set the roughness and multiply, which is what this blend mode is, these levels with this color. I then go and I get the flower swirls without edges because I really wanted to adjust the roughness of these patterns here. So you could see as I move my light around. You can see right around here, we're getting some really nice painterly strokes, like the, there's a thickness to that paint. So I took 
this gradient map because it's color information that we're dealing with now. You could also use the grayscale values if that's what you're looking for. And I inverted it, that mask that we created, brought down the levels just a tiny bit and then blended them together. So now we have sort of a rough variance on our flower shape. I then took a mask of what our glass panes are looking like here with all of our sort of variants and you know with that sort of frosted glass texture and I applied that as a mask to this last blend here and used a uniform color so I can decide whether or not these back panels are more rough or completely shiny. I decided to settle for something right kind of in the middle where it's not too rough, not too shiny and you pump that right into your roughness map. So that's giving us this really cool effect where you can see we've got some variance in the roughness in the back. We've also got some variance in the roughness of our of our beams here. You can see we've got a little bit of variance there. Of course with our flower as well. So I really wanted to show off that sort of stained glass feel where you have light coming through the glass and I kind of wanted to fake it with an emissive map. So if I go to my environment, go to edit, and then bring my exposure down, you can see we have this emissive map here and it's sort of faking the idea that light is coming through even though uh, there really isn't. And you can adjust the uh, values of this. So that just takes our albedo texture, our swirly albedo texture, and blends in the basically the final output of our our colors here. And if you apply that mask and just use a copy on blend, you get that. And then I use the levels to sort of tighten this up and brighten it up places and put that into the emissive channel where you can just, to, to make another output, you just press spacebar and type in output and then you can change the the usage of this output. So right now in this case, I'll add an add a usage here and, and choose emissive. Then to get it to show up, you have to right click and say view outputs in 3D view. So I'm gonna bring my exposure back up a little bit. And the last thing that I wanted to do was add a little bit of transparency. So if you look here, you can actually see through, if I rotate our environment, you can see down here, you can see through the glass just a little bit as if that paint was starting to fade. So I took a blend of our outlines. I didn't want any of our outlines to be transparent. So I just added a completely white uniform color, blended it with our edges mask here that we created a while back. So then I wanna vary the opacity with this mask that we're using with our swirls and all that stuff. We have really beautiful grayscale values here that we can use to vary up our opacity. And so if you tighten that up a bit with a histogram scan, so you see we have less values here, but we do have a little bit of these sort of poking through and apply that as a mask, we now can choose how transparent and opaque our flower is. So, and that's coming into another blend here so that we don't adjust any of the background transparency if we don't want to. So if I adjust this opacity here, you can see I'm just adjusting the background but if I adjust this one, we can dial in the opacity of the window itself. So now you can see straight through it, and then we can dial in some of the transparency there. So this is what our new graph looks like. I put all the new parts in this yellow, in these yellow frames, and I made a frame for our outputs just to make it more clear. Lastly, I wanna show you what it's like to add a bitmap in and, and create a custom image here. So I brought in the Substance Designer logo and I converted it to grayscale using this grayscale conversion node. And then I inverted it. And because this isn't a complete black and white mask, I did have to change some of the levels to make it much more of a black and white sharp mask. And so now if I take this and put it into my quantized grayscale, you can see our changes are propagating through the rest of our graph and we're getting a stained glass substance designer logo here. It's pretty cool. So of course you can change the colors, you can change the patterns. You might want to change the supports a little bit because this one's been dialed in for the flower. But anything that you add in here, in fact, you know, you can always bring this into our shape mapper and you can see what the shape mapper does here. Uh, let's plug it in. And that looks a bit silly, but you can see what's going on. It's kind of cool. 
So yeah, you can get an overview of what this graph looks like. And that is how you can create a stained glass material in Substance Designer. So I hope you learned a little more about masks and how you can break your graphs into simpler components so that it keeps you from swimming through a lake of connections and lines and all that craziness. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more tutorials and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. And if you're new around here, welcome. Welcome everyone and thank you all so much for subscribing to my channel. It's great to see that so many people are interested in learning more about Substance Designer and other 3D applications. If you'd like to see more about what I'm doing, check out my Twitter, I have it linked below. And I've got a live stream coming up later this week where we're continuing to develop a sci-fi wall texture that we've been working on and I've got some pretty cool ideas for that. So check that out later this week and thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.